legendary, and he has maintained longevity and durability in and through real music and genuine emotion. Y'all just heard it. He's taken us on a journey and continues to take us on a journey through the history of modern black music from the past to the present. He's genuine. He's gifted. He is talented. He is. Kipper Jones, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for my guest this evening, the amazing Mr. Kipper Jones, a.k.a. Uncle Kipper. How are you, sir? Yeah. Y'all don't have that canned applause? Yeah, there it is. You know it. <laughs> <laughs> you know you're going to get your canned applause. <laughs> hey, lady. Oh, how are you, sir? How's it going? Oh, I'm awesome. I am awesome. Um, I I tell you, I I'm so grateful. I'm grateful like you t- for every day, uh, for yeah. every moment of every day. It's it's uh, you know, we we see things happen around us and all that kind of stuff. And I'll be very candid with you. Um, some people know I come from a group called Tees. We were yeah. uh, we were big in the '80s, but mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, that's where we got our start and. Um, Myself and Chucky Booker, Cornelius Mims, Derek and Thomas Organ, and uh, Rex Solis, and a young mm-hmm. man named Jay Shanklin, who was our second bass player. Well, Jay passed away yesterday, and oh. so we're all we're all feeling that, you know, we're all yeah. kind of feeling it. And um, but I tell you, we are grateful for the time we got to spend with him, and mm-hmm. we are grateful for the time that we have now. So. Yeah, you know, I yeah. just I just want to shout out to Jay and and his family, Miss Sylvia, and, and all the Tees fans and all our Tees family. Um, yeah, you know, and, and just pray for us all. So, yes, and you know, some to some degree, you know, memories give you some comfort, but it's like you say, it's a bittersweet thing because Absolutely. you know, the person that has meant so much to you is you know is 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 gone. From this earth, their spirit remains, but they're gone from this earth. But thank you for sharing that. Thank you so much for, yeah. you know, for sharing that. As as we came back from break, we were listening to just, I think, a wonderful example of why and how you have maintained longevity all of these years, how you have been able to take the music from years gone by and have I think, in my opinion, transformed it and brought it up to to, to where we all are today. Can you speak to us about some of the lessons along the way, your strategies, techniques, however you want to label it, that you feel have contributed to your longevity? What what did you learn from that? It's it's interesting that you you asked me that. so you've seen my show with the band it's, yes. uh, here here in Atlanta. It's My band's called mm-hmm. Kipper Jones R&B Circus, featuring the Black Bettys. And what I do, um, it's interesting because I'm a songwriter. People know me from writing songs for Brandy and Vanessa Williams and Kenny <laughs> Lattimore and Shaka and Shante Moore and a bunch of other people. But on my show, I it's an homage to R&B and soul music as I know it and as I grew up listening to it. Um, Earth, Wind, and Fire, and Maze, and Luther Vandross, and um, Temptations, and Parliament Funkadelic, and all those things that I loved growing up and listening to, that mm-hmm. I'm sure that people my age and you know around in that demographic still love to hear. Um, mm-hmm. And it's funny that you asked me again because I was watching the Grammys the other night, um, and you know my brother and I we always kind of you know call each other during the breaks and like, do you see that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> So he called me after uh, Smokey Robinson came out and mm. uh, introduced the, I forget what award it was, but Billie Eilish, uh, Eilish, however you say her last name, she won the award. And she mm-hmm. comes on stage with her brother and she did her thank yous and everything and then she went away. And my brother called me in a huff. He was like, how dare she go on stage and not pay homage to Smokey Robinson? Mm. She didn't say anything about him. Anything. I said, Tiger, she doesn't know him. She's mm-hmm. 18. She does. She has no idea who he is. She doesn't understand that she's only up there because of him. Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't. She yeah. doesn't get it. And so my brother, who is a former A&R guy in the business, you know, he beats me up about, why are you always doing these cover shows, man? What's up with that? 
you know. Mm -hmm. And so when she did that and he called me so angry, I said, now you understand why I do what I do. Yes. Because if I don't hold that up, nobody talks about it. Nobody remembers Smokey Robinson. Right. Nobody remembers the greats. Nobody remembers mm -hmm. the people who did this. And that's the reason why we're able to do what we do now. So I feel like it's my duty to keep that music alive and keep that music mm -hmm. in the forefront so that people understand where what they do now even comes from. Yes. You know, I was having so. a conversation earlier today, and actually you came up in the conversation, but because the gentleman that I was having conversation with has an Internet uh, radio station that mm -hmm. plays a lot of the classic music, and his, you know, his mission is the same, is to keep that, keep that music you know, keep that music alive because it is, it is rather, and I, and I've, I've seen that before and I know I can relate to this young lady standing there and not giving Smokey Robinson homage. Like, do you understand who you're standing next to? You know, yeah. Yeah. you know, do you understand child who you are standing next to? And you know, that was you my know? brother's thing. He was just livid. Yes. He was just like, I don't even understand. She shouldn't even be allowed to come back in there. I'm like, listen, Tiger, don't blame her. It's not her fault. It's yeah. our fault if we don't keep that music alive and hold these mm -hmm. people up to that standard to which they deserve. Right. And remember where it comes from and who, That's you know, it. who was you know the 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 original artist. I can remember getting into to uh, discussions, shall we shall we say, with some young people <laughs> who think, <laughs> you know, a song a song is an original by you know some recent rapper. I'm like, no, 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 no. You know, they right. sample that from someone from you know years gone by, and and, and right. like you said, just not knowing, just not understanding. Um, so, and and I have to say, as one who has seen your live shows, and I'm speaking to my audience. If you are here in the Atlanta area or if you are outside of the Atlanta area and Kipper and his band comes to your town, please just go see him. Just go see him. You will not be disappointed at all. Always, always, always puts on such a wonderful show. And the thing that I love about your show, among the many things that I love about your show, is you, there is so much heart soul, spirit, I'm trying to find the right adjective, <laughs> soul, spirit, energy, passion, I could go on and on, that is just scattered all over the stage when you are on that, on that stage, because what you're doing comes from an authentic place, and each and every, every, um, musician that you have on the stage, the Black Bettys, <laughs> young man, Jesse, he's just the cutest thing to me. <laughs> I don't know how old he is, but he is just the cutest thing. <laughs> oh, Lord, you and my sister both. <laughs> he is just adorable. He's just, I just want to go to him and his feet. He's just cute. You know, he's crazy but I, talented. Yeah. Yes, yeah. but I can see when he plays, he gets it. Like, yeah. he, he doesn't look like he's old enough that, that, you know, he's even old enough to have been, you know, able to understand who he was listening to, you know, back in the day. But he gets it. I can tell by the way he plays. Am I wrong? Yeah, you know, <laughs> no, you're not wrong at all. The, the, I think the oldest guy in the band uh, next to me is uh -huh. probably 20 years my junior so, oh my God. I mean, none of these kids grew up listening to that stuff, but they, you know, if, if they yeah, did, it was because their parents played it, you know, but they, they're right. consummate musicians and consummate professionals, and they <laughs> soak that stuff up and play it like they played on those records. Um, I'm telling you. Our bass player, Detox, amazing, and my music director, Quentin Robinson, who's our drummer, is just, just one of the most gifted musicians I've ever met. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so, and Billy Barlow is my, my keyboard player. And I mean, these guys are just incredible. They, they also all play with like Avery Sunshine, Jesse plays with Neo. Yeah. So, I mean, they're, they're all over the place and, you know, I'm, I'm blessed to be able to catch them when I can, you know, the girls, the right. Bettys, I mean, they're doing their thing. And let me yeah. just say that we're working on new music with the Bettys that is mm -hmm. incredible. And I just cannot mm -hmm. wait. Oh, well, keep me posted. Now, keep me posted. So let me Absolutely. let me ask you this. You know, yeah. back 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 in the day, and and what prompted as I the last show that that I was at, I started creating these mental questions just based on what I was seeing. 
Ah. Art, artists were were groomed, you know, yes. prior to performing. There was there's such a thing as a stage presence. And I remember when I saw Gladys Knight at the Apollo Theater in Manchester, the United Kingdom. She goes every year in June, second or third mm. weekend in June. And I was over there and she spoke to this. What how can I phrase this question? What impact do you feel that the knowledge of stage presence has to do with the success of legendary artists and songwriters such as yourself? Does that question make sense? Oh, it absolutely makes sense. Um, so I was brought into the business through the Motown school. Um, my first job in this business was as a, as a demo singer for Marilyn McLeod and Pam Sawyer, who wrote, uh, if there's a cure for this, I don't mm. want it. For Diana Ross, right? So yeah. when I was 16, I went to school with Marilyn's daughter, and um, she introduced me to her mom, and her mom and her songwriting partner hired me to be a demo singer for them. So mm-hmm. learning through the Motown way, that was absolutely all about artist development. That mm. is something that is sorely lacking and sorely missing today. Um, because of the age of independence, which I absolutely love, um, mm-hmm. but we have to understand that there are things about the business, about presentation, that you don't yeah. just wake up knowing. Um, you know, you have to be coached in certain things, like how to conduct an interview, how to present yourself on stage. Um, but Mr. Gordy, when he groomed his artists, I mean, it was everything from how to walk into a room, how to sit how to make sure that a lady sits before you, how to pull out her chair, mm-hmm. how to, which mm-hmm. fork, I mean, etiquette, how, which fork to eat with, um, yes. you know, and all, I mean, just every little thing because he wanted his artist groomed to the absolute perfect degree. Now, when I go on stage, I'm understanding mm-hmm. one thing. I did not come to see, I'm not dressing like I came to the show. I'm dressing like I'm on stage. Like yes. somebody came to see me, you know what I mean? Right. So I need mm-hmm. to present myself in that fashion and not just like, you know, I, if if I'm doing an open mic thing, I get it, T-shirts, jeans, sweatsuit, whatever. Mm-hmm. But if you're coming to see a show and people are spending their money to come yes. and see a show, it is your responsibility to give them a show. Don't a show. give them, yeah, don't give them, uh, I just got through cleaning my car. We don't, you know, mm. listen. I see that and it just, it bothers me, you know, yes. with a lot of these younger performers because they don't know. And, it, and again, it's honest ignorance. You don't know because nobody told you. Right. So if you ever get around Uncle Kipper, he is going to tell you, <laughs> <laughs> listen, you cannot do that. That's not, yes. that's not how we do this thing. That's not how our ancestors did it. That's not why Jackie Wilson and Nat King Cole and, and, mm-hmm. and Smokey Robinson again and Luther Vandross, for God's sake, would yeah. never go on stage looking like they just bought a ticket thought? to see themselves. No, Ooh, absolutely not. Come on, Kipper. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. So mm. it's important. That's you huge. know, it's very, very it important. It is. It is. Yeah. If you if you could bring any aspect of performing, songwriting, making music back from days gone by, what would it be? And it doesn't have to be one thing. Um, and or, oh, or go ahead. Okay. No, no, no. You go ahead. <laughs> um, and I was well, because because I after I asked the question, I thought, okay, well, maybe it, the aspect might not have necessarily died, but maybe it might have changed. What would mm-hmm. what would you preserve? Maybe that's a better word. What would you preserve? Yeah, I think. You know, you know what's also funny now is like you know when you watch a show like the Grammys or something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. we used to we used to rush home because Michael Jackson was going to be on, or mm-hmm. Prince was going to be on, or Diana Ross mm-hmm. was going to do a thing, yeah. or you know, something. So there was some uh, uh, urgency, Electrifying. some mystique, mm-hmm. some something that you just had to see. We don't have that anymore. 